Wampum itself, firstly, is not a universal term, and every nation had its own term for what wampum is. So for Seneca people, for example, part of the Haudenosaunee or Iroquois people, the word is otgoet, and that is the bead, the wampum bead. Wampum is a Narragansett term, meaning shiny white shell. And over time, it got applied to the purple beads, also being called wampum. And so it became a generic title for shell beads. But when it's made into a panel or, you know, along what we call today a belt, they don't call it a wampum belt in the language. It's called gahioni or a river. And uh, sometimes it's known as a mat. There's no simple way to capture all of the facets and meanings and intentions of wampum. Like in terms of the Haudenosaunee people and other wampum using peoples, wampum itself, the bead, represents ideas. It can represent law. It can represent structure, infrastructure, governments, foundational constitutional meanings. It can be spiritual. So for the people who used wampum long ago, and even today, it still holds all that meaning. Wampum holds great significance to the Haudenosaunee people because it is part of the origin stories behind the formation of a lasting confederacy, which includes the Seneca, Cayuga, Onondaga, Oneida, and Mohawk originally. When they became unified, it was under a law, which is known as the Gainas Hat Goa, the Great Law of Peace. And at the origin, at the beginnings of that, a man, the Kanahuida, who brought this kind of message of the law to the people, but maybe more importantly, was able to devise a way people could put aside their pain and their anger and frustrations uh, from the wars that had been going on. He invented, really, the first use of wampum. And he used these freshwater shells to, and strung them on strings. And he condoled this man, Ayanwenta, who had lost his family. And he took a string and he said, with this string of beads, if you accept what I am saying, and you accept this great law, and we take this string of beads, I'm gonna wipe away the tears from your eyes. The tears which symbolize your pain and, and, and sadness, which cloud your vision and prevents you from seeing clearly. This string of wampum is gonna do that. And he took the second string and he said, with this string, I'm gonna remove the plugs from your ears. That's the, the wording, right? When you're in grief, they say that there's a, a plug or a buzzing sound that prevents you from hearing people. And so he says, this strand is gonna remove that from your ear. And then he took a third and he said, this third strand is gonna clear your throat, the lump in your throat that you receive when you're in terrible grief prevents you from speaking clearly. It blocks you up. And so he's gonna remove all these blockages from you in an emotional and a spiritual sense so that you can then see clearly, you can hear again one another, and you can deliver messages and speak clearly again. And so if they accept this idea, that will be a way that you can stop the cycle of retribution and violence amongst peoples and tribes that had been going on for so long. And it was a powerful message if everyone accepted all of this, accepted the system, you could then unify in a peaceful way. We start with this shell, all life begins in water. There's the essence of the importance. And after death, it is actually the shell is still living. It's a living identity that's there forever. So wampum is forever. It is a shell bead made from a marine shell, and later becomes two uh, types of bead from two different marine animals. One is a bivalve called the quahog, and the other is the whelk, and they make white and purple small beads. The white comes from the core of the um, 
whelk shell. The purple comes from the edge of the eating clam, the coal hog. And it's a very specific species of clam that's in the Northeast of the United States. Purple took much more time to make and than the white. And so in terms of, like you might say, even a trade value, the purple would hold a higher um, price. But of course, native people, Haudenosaunee people did not really use it like a money they were using it in this sort of ceremonial and political way. And yet, because it was being produced in those uh, colonial communities, they knew that they could exchange that wampum, finished wampum, into the interior to uh, native peoples who needed it. And they knew they, had, they could trade it to the French too, who had no access to those shells. And so for them, it really did become a commodity of exchange. It was using in currency, and that was established by the French, Dutch, and English, because they needed a monetary system that has equal value that everybody can use. And so the kind of is the origins of wampum as a, um, you know, a slang for money. And we use that term, give me a few clams. But if I'm going to go to the store and shell out some money, that's the wampum speaking. The process by, to make them, you know, long ago was, was different, obviously, coming from two, two different types of shell. In the beginning, it was using a fire-hardened stick with sand and resin to grind a hole. And you often see them rubbing their hands together for fire starters like that. And you also would do that for drilling. And what that would be, because you're using a very wide stick, you have a funnel-shaped hole going into the bead and then they would flip it over and try to go from the other side to meet. Then they would also use flint. And again, it'd be the same thing. It'd be a very fall shape to hold from both ends. Then the Europeans introduced the steel file with and it can go straight through the shell. For the Haudenosaunee people, wampum is a living legacy and it is used within the different communities across uh, what is now New York and Canada, even down to Oklahoma. But we know it was long before Europeans arrived, right? That, that wampum began to be integral to the way people did things and the organization of the Confederacy and the nations within it. It originated within the Confederacy and the adjacent and neighboring nations learned that same system and learned the same system of protocols and so at some point, maybe in the middle or early 17th century, wampum was understood by everyone east of the Mississippi, all the way to the south, all the way to the north, and even the plains and prairie peoples understood wampum. They all had to understand wampum. The English government understood wampum, the French government, the Dutch Republic, they all began, they had to relate to native people, and native people used wampum. To, to be that vehicle of, of understanding, diplomacy, and communication. Like any document, maybe that's done, there's, there's only one. And it's the person that possesses it is the owner. And so in order, in order to share that information and others to see it, there'll be an individual called a wampum keeper. And he's like the archivist and responsible for the the well-being of the wampum belts and the knowledge they contain. The different forms of wampum hold different meanings according to the symbols and designs on them, which is assigned by the people producing it. Well, like the square on the belt could be a town, could be a nation, so it has many different interpretations, but you have to be part of that to know, understand what the negotiations were. And the belts would be brought up periodically to be renewed, the words respoken to the nation. And you look into a wampum belt, there's a lot of motifs, and also the position of the belt, whether it's down or up, indicates different things. You know, peace, war. You have a purple background, it indicates serious situations, difficulties. A white background is for, like, for condolence, it's something that's non-aggressive, a treaty and an agreement. We always talk about the color of purple being significant because it's difficult times, hard times. In this case, it's signifying war. 
And if war is going to be declared, the belt is coated red with a hematite. That's an iron oxide rock, or an ochre, red ochre. And that is like blood should be shed. It's a war belt. And once the war is done, to neutralize it, the belts are coated with a green clay or, or a blue clay. And that cleanses the belt. Takes the hatred out of the belt. So they have wampum, which uh, encapsulates major ideas about responsibility, title holders, leadership, confederation, um, you know, all these sort of, and I call them constitutional belts, which are the documents of the Haudenosaunee people. They're, they're the only ones who have those foundational documents. And if every belt, every panel, every river or mat made of wampum represents ideas and represents law and it represents responsibilities the same way that paper documents um, hold the same meaning in, we'll say, a modern setting. To look at a constitution of the Haudenosaunee, it would be a wampum belt, it would be the Hiawatha belt. If you wanted to look at a constitution of the United States, it's on a piece of parchment but they both have the same meaning and, and value to the people. So basically, wampum is a document. It represents words and ideas, laws, concepts, responsibilities, and agreements.